Hi and welcome to another tutorial for Excel users. In this tutorial we're going to continue looking at charts and in the previous tutorial you saw how you can update charts by simply clicking on the chart and then using the boundary box to adjust the amount of data that you include in the chart by clicking and dragging as you can see there. It's not too bad if you're only occasionally adding new rows and columns to the table to manually update the chart, but what if you're regularly adding rows and columns to a data table? It will obviously get a bit tedious constantly updating the chart manually. So what we want is Excel to automatically update the chart every time a new column of data or a new row of data is added to the table. There is an option in Excel that will help us do that, but before I set that option, I'm first of all going to make a couple of changes. I'm just going to move this min max mini table here, just select that and click and drag it out of the way to give us some space below the table. And I'm also going to add a row, a blank row between the title of the worksheet and the first row of column headings there. So to do that, simply right click in this case on the number two and choose insert. I'm also going to remove the formatting. So first remove the color formatting, click on the drop down of the fill button, choose no fill. And I'm also going to remove the border formatting. So click on the drop down arrow for the borders tool there and choose no border. And then just fix the formatting for my header row because now it doesn't have a top line. So I'll just select the whole table and reapply that border formatting all borders there. Okay, and then click away. So there's my reformatted table. I'll just reduce the size of that row two as well, I'll reduce the row height. And now all I need to do is click anywhere in the table, go to the insert tab and click table. The first thing you'll see is a dialog box. It's called create table. And it's simply asking you to check that the data that's been selected is the correct data for the table. And you can see the range there a3 to i7. You can also see the marquee box around the data table indicating that it has indeed guessed the right range. Now if I hadn't inserted the blank row Excel would have included the title of the worksheet with the data table. So that's why I did that and that's an important consideration when you're creating data tables is to make sure that you have no blank rows and no blank columns as part of the table. So all I need to do here is click OK to confirm that selection is correct. And you'll see some interesting changes have happened to the table now. If I click away first of all, you'll see we have some different formatting applied. So I've got this interesting alternate banding formatting on the rows. You also notice that the word column one appears at the top left of the table. And I've also got the drop down arrows there, which are filters. Now right now I don't want that formatting and I don't want the drop down filters there so I'm going to click back on the table. When I do that you'll notice we get a new tab called Table Tools Design. For now I'm just going to come across to the Table Style section there. Click this up arrow so it goes to the very top left and the very top left option is to have no formats. Click on that and that removes the banded row formatting. I also want to remove these drop down arrows, which are the filters. And to do that, simply click on the data tab and click the large filter button in the middle there in the sort and filter section. And that removes the filters. And just for now, I'm going to go back to the home tab. Okay, so that's cleared up all the formatting, except for the word column one, which is a clue that this is a dynamic table and any chart linked to this data table will automatically update as you add new rows and columns. So let's update the table then. If I click into cell I3 and just drag across one column, just go to the bottom right of the cell I3 and then release the mouse button. And if you look at the chart, you will see we have September automatically added. So let's put some numbers in there for September then. Just update our sales figures. And as you see, as I did that, we can see September has got the new data points automatically included. You'll also notice that the orientation of the labels has changed because the month names are now too long. So Excel has made those labels diagonal. If I don't really want that, I can fix it in a couple of ways. One is to make the chart larger. Another is to make the font size smaller, but that makes the text less readable, so I don't like that. A better way, I think, is to abbreviate 
the month names and we're all familiar with month abbreviations so it shouldn't be a problem and to do that I simply click into cell B3 where my January label is and instead I'm going to call that Jan. Once I've done that I can then go to the bottom right of that cell, drag across and Excel will use autofill to abbreviate all the month names and you can see there my chart now has automatically corrected and I think I prefer that with the abbreviations. Now of course if I add a new row of data to the table the chart will automatically update as well so first of all let's just move that chart down a little bit and we'll come to A8 so let's say I have a new branch called Central I'll just put the name in there and as soon as I tab across here or press the enter key keep an eye on the chart and you'll see something new appear and there we are we have our central branch automatically added to the chart which is the turquoise or light blue color so let's put some figures in and we will see the result and you can see there the line growing across the chart like so just press the enter key on that final one so there's one of the benefits of using the insert table function and that is to allow your charts to automatically update as you update or expand your table of data. There'll be much more on using tables in future tutorials, but for now, thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful and I'll see you next time.